Hey, it's Ethan here at eTrailer. Today we're going to be taking a look at and showing you how to install these Koenig K-Summit XXL snow tire chains on a 2023 Chevrolet Suburban. We'll be putting these on the tire size 265, 65, 18. Make sure you check the fit guide on eTrailer.com before you get your chains to make sure that they'll fit your tire size. We have these chains on the rear axle of our Suburban here. Always double check the owner's manual in your case to make sure that you get the chains on the right axle for your car. These tire chains are involved and they're intricate and they have a lot going on so let's get into a little bit more about how they work starting with the overview of why you would use something like this. Now you can see that it does have this central hub here and that makes these arms and everything work and there's no contact behind the back of your vehicle at all so if you do have limited wheel well clearance these meet those class S standards and that's one of the main reasons why I could see somebody using these chains is because they don't have any interference behind your tire at all. Otherwise, the chains are similar to other diamond pattern chains that Koenig provides. Starting with the diamond pattern itself, which will get you more coverage on your tire, helping a lot with turns and general traction. As you can see, there are also these traction plates that are going along the diamonds themselves, which will help bust some of that ice and snow. The links are square links, but they're pretty low profile still. The square link aspect of it is gonna help them get that bite into some of that ice and snow that we talked about. Typically square links are a little bit bumpier, but these are so low profile, I don't think that you're gonna really notice the difference in these chains. These five arms work as your self-tensioning, so as you drive, the chains will shift around as you bump and turn, whatever have you. These arms will help keep the chains in place. Additionally, because the arms exist, there's no contact with your rims. So if protecting that is something that's important to you, these chains work well for that as well, other than the contact that they make on the nut, which isn't the rim itself. So unless you're super worried about that, I think you'll be all right. The chains do come two to a set in this soft shell bag that is big enough to support the two chains and it does have a nice pocket in the back for your instructions and your tools. So I wouldn't worry about picking up anything else to keep these chains in. They're gonna do a good job. I will say that the installation of these chains is particularly intricate and we always definitely recommend practicing in your garage before you find yourself stranded on the side of the road trying to do it. Also, if you're putting on your driver and your passenger side, which you definitely should, I recommend doing it at the same time so when you roll forward or backwards to get the chains on, you can do them both at the same time. You can check out how we did it right now. First thing we want to do is make sure we have everything we need. So in this bag are a handful of tools and spacers. These are in case you need them. This lever here is also a wrench that will turn the bolts when we get to those later. There is this Allen style T key and a flower key that work together and a couple of additional bolts if we need those. First thing after we need, we know what we need, we wanna check our instructions manual because there are different sizes for different tires. So we checked, in our case, we have to remove two of the spacers. So that's our first step. I've already taken care of it, but you wanna check the instructions to make sure you're taking out the right amount of spacers for your tire size. This here are the spacers that you would probably need to remove in your case. In our case, we had to remove two. This is where the Allen key and the flower come into play. So you'll just fit the bolt into the flower on one side and then the Allen key into the other side. Holding on to this, you'll turn to loosen the spacer up and remove as many as you need to. Next, they recommend getting familiar with this U-Adapt system, which will hold on to the bolts onto our tires. There's this bolt at the other end. That's what this wrench will be used for to loosen up and tighten that when we need to. But for now, we just need to lift it up onto one of the nuts on the tire and see if it gets an adequate hold. If we can't rotate this lever in the middle, that's when we need to use one of the spacers that they provide. But in our case, it's a good hold, so we don't need to. Now we can actually fit the chains onto our tire. So we'll do our best to fold these arms out. They're gonna to wanna to fold back in. The more you can get to stay out, the easier it's gonna be. Start with putting the top two sort of at 10 and two, like you would hold a steering wheel. And then we'll come around and get the other arms extended and loosely in place. 
just trying to get them on as best we can for now and then we'll attach this U-Adapt system. We'll fit this on to this nut here. Doesn't matter which one you put it on as long as the arrow down here on the lever ends up pointing towards the center of your tire. So we'll get it on and we'll hand thread it as far as it will go. And then we'll come back and we'll have to use that lever system that we talked about earlier. Just tightening it up. It'll actually make a noise once you get it tightened where you need it to be. It can definitely be a little bit cumbersome to get around these arms and tighten it at the same time. But just be patient. Turn it until it tightens and you hear that click. It's like that. Now the next step they suggest is to start ratcheting this center piece down. And we will do that a little bit, but not as far as they recommend because in our case, we will actually have to move the tire to get the chains on the rest of the way. So if we tighten it down too much, it'll make it harder for the next step. So we're gonna leave it a little bit looser for now. Now, because we can't get this underneath our tire, unless it were to be maybe jacked up, we're gonna actually have to roll the tire forward or backwards. In our case, we'll roll it back a few feet so that none of these connectors where the links actually connect on these plastic arms are gonna be covered by the tire. So we'll try to stop it in the middle of these chains here so we can get all of the rest of the arms in place. Now we've moved the tire back. You can see why we didn't want it too tight because even though we did leave it a little bit loose, it's still difficult to get the rest of these arms up and on. So I'm actually going to loosen this whole thing just a little bit to get us more slack to get the arms on. Now all of these arms are in place. I will say it definitely did take a little bit of struggle and a little bit of an effort to make sure that they were all on there. Now that they are, We'll finish up by winching the rest of the slack until we see that red line appear, just like that right there. And that's how you know we're at the desired tension. Once you see that red line and everything is in place, that's it for the installation. Just get the chains installed on your passenger side tire as well. They should tension while you're driving, but we do recommend still rolling forward or backwards a few times to make sure that everything is in place and then you're ready to go. Overall, I honestly have some conflicting opinions about these chains. The build quality is really nice, and the fact that it doesn't have any interference with the back of your tire are some of the bigger selling points of these chains, in my opinion. As far as the installation process goes, unless that clearance is something that's the most important issue for you, I would maybe check out some of Koenig's other self-tensioning or assisted tensioning chains. The installation of those is still pretty straightforward, but still less involved than these. I will say if you do live in an area that gets a decent amount of light snow and ice and you want something that's going to hold up to the task and doesn't make any interference issues with your wheel well at all, Koenig Case Summit might be a good option for you. And this was just a look at how to install them and how they fit on our 2023 Chevrolet Suburban.